Hello my friends, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Matt. Today we'll cover the installation of Comfy UI. It's the node-based alternative to Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11. And we will start by going to the Comfy UI page in on GitHub. You'll find the link below. I'm gonna post this one on YouTube so you'll see the links. And scroll down, you'll see the Installing on Windows, direct link to download. Of course, if you have other operating systems, go ahead. And it's just, it's a zip file that you download and extract. In my case, I put it directly on my C drive here. And the first thing you wanna do is to configure the paths, assuming that you're coming here from automatic, then you already have your checkpoints. And so you don't wanna copy those over. You can go on to the Comfy UI directory here, and you're gonna see the extra model paths yaml file now it also has the extension example which means we have to delete that yes we do want it to change and from here all you're going to do is put in your base path to your drive where you keep your other stable diffusion and so in my case it's just uh sd5 and the checkpoints will follow after. The only thing that won't work will be the control net. You should put that in manually because typically the control nets on automatic are stored in the extension slash control net slash models directory. Now we can save that. Remember to remove the example and we can load it for the first time using the GPU bat file. It loads pretty quick. Once you have Comfy UI loaded for the first time, it'll look like this. This is the default layout to get you started. And you'll want to check to make sure that you have your checkpoints loaded correctly from your directory that you customized. In this case, I have a lot that I'm constantly testing and never wanting to throw any away. For Stable Diffusion 1.5, I'm currently enjoying the Epic Photogasm and Natural Sin. These are good checkpoints. Of course, we're an architecture channel so we're going to do a uh, modern house in a forest with fog. And I really want it to be foggy, so in brackets I'm going to put fog, close brackets, comma, photo, detail, realism. And to make sure that we are working in photos, I want to make sure I tape in, in my negative prompts, cartoon, fake, rendering, 3D painting. These are the positive and negative prompts, as you can clearly see here. And the easiest way to uh, remember that is to color the positive green. And this is positive because it goes into the positive sampler. And the negative, we color that one red. Now, everything happens here. This is where the magic, the magic happens. And latent image is the, in this case, the blank, a blank image with our width and height set 1024 by 768 as our image size and we go into our sampling settings we have the uh, seed which is displayed and then each time we generate we want it randomized we have our settings typically i like to do about 30 to 40 and our sampler name this is often confusing for people but we're just going to stick to the DPM++ uh, for photorealism, and any of these are good options. The GPU, which uh, I've been testing, so we'll just use that one, that's fine. And your two schedulers when you're using the DPM are uh, Keras and Exponential. I found Exponential is good for a lot of smooth surfaces if you have those in your scene. So right now we'll stick to Keras. And denoising won't matter because we are creating from an empty an empty image. And I'll just cover this. But basically, we have our checkpoint lo loaded, which has to be controlled. The, the clip is the vision encoder for prompts to identify objects. And the VAE is the encoder to convert a pixel bitmap image into a, a latent image for the um, denoising process that latent image has to be decoded into an image that's why this is here so we can hit Control enter to generate our first image which you see it will save into the comfy 
uh, output directory. And here we are, we got that definitely the fog is happening because we put that in brackets, so that's good. And if we want to generate from image to image, we will delete this and now we're going to replace the latent image with a loaded image. And so there's two ways to bring up a new node. The first way is to right click, add node, and then we pick from here, we're going to do an image, load image. The next option is to double click on the left and type in, get a search, and I know what I want to do is load, so I put load in. And then the third option is to drag it out from the node and it'll give us our suggestions. And in this case, we want to do a load image. However, you have to encode something. You have to encode these images first. So actually this has to go from latent image into a VAE encode, uh, which is the inverse of the decode, of course. Unlike an, uh, starting with an empty slot, in this case, when we're loading a bitmap, we have to have it encoded into a latent. And you can see here, there's two node connectors. One of them is for the VAE to come from our checkpoint. And now we only need one of these. And so I'm gonna load a file. What we'll do is we'll try to convert this image into something foggy, okay? And you can see that I've reduced this. This is a, a simple, this is a 3K rendering that I brought into Photoshop and then reduced to 768 for testing. Uh, that's for speed, okay? Yes, yeah, so this is a this is a raw render from um, uh, 3ds Max and FStorm. So we go into Pixel, and from here everything should be working. Of course, first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't look anything like our our saved image looks nothing like our original, and that's because of the denoising. The denoising is right now. Let's call this 100%, and so it's 100% generated from the, our prompts, both the positive and negative prompts. So if we want a combination of the two, we have to bring our denoising down to a value in which it'll mix the two prompts, or sorry, it'll mix basically the prompts and our base image. And we can do that at 50%, and then we'll get some sort of combination, All right? So it certainly has the fog, but it has it doesn't, of course, have our architecture, which is important. So we can lower this down further. Control enter to generate. And yeah, which that's pretty close. And it's definitely foggier. So I'll show you how to install control net. We want to install this really cool add on to comfy UI. It's called the uh, comfy manager. And so I have that here. You have to just simply Google search. You can look down below for the link, the Comfy UI Manager. It requires us to have Git clone installed. There's some other methods, but this is the this is definitely the easiest one. And you should have Git for Windows installed, which is Git for Windows. And you simply download that. It allows you to put uh, command prompts. It'll directly download and install some software. So the the instructions here is to go into your custom nodes directory. We're going to copy that into our comfy UI extra nodes, custom nodes directory. And so here's a quick little trick is that you go onto the path and you type in CMD and that'll load you right into the directory where you need to be. And as the instruction said, we copy git clone and then the address and press enter. And now you have it installed. It's that easy. We can close this. We do have to restart our back end comfy UI. So I'm going to close that, run this again. Now what's really cool about comfy was, is that you can see it's loaded um, a second window here. If I had, I'll close that because every step is saved automatically. So when the, when we close this and reboot it, we don't have anything lost. And now we have the manager uh, button down here, which can install everything from additional models to custom nodes. And it also can allow us to quickly check for updates. Okay. So right now we want to have some control net installed. So we go to install custom nodes. These are ranked by the uh, creation date. 
And the first one is, of course, the Comfy Manager, which is itself a, a custom node, as it says. So here we want to install the control net features. All right, we need preprocessors. We want the Comfy UI, the Comfy World custom nodes, and we also want the advanced one. So we can install all three of those. And we have to restart, so no big deal. Close that. Close this. Close the window. Restart it. Okay, it takes some time, but again, because we closed that, it pops up again. We have our, uh, where, where we left off. And now when we go to look for our control net features, they should be loaded here. Control net. Okay, so there's a couple things we need to do. We need a control net loader. Control net apply advanced. And we need our preprocessor. Laris preprocessor. Let's do it the other way. We have our node, control net, preprocessors, normal in depth, and the Laris. Okay, so our Laris, we're gonna put this up here. So we need those th three things. Okay, and the first things you can see when you when you look at this for the first time and you think, how, how am I gonna in connect it? Well, the first, you can, you can get a couple clues by the fact of that it's all nicely color coordinated. And so here our clips and our um, prompts go into the positive and we're rerouting them through the control net. So we go to negative and then negative. And now we have to connect to our control net. Which control net are we using? We're gonna do depth. And so we're gonna be loading a depth model. Now, these are the ones that it comes with. However, and I didn't put it in the pathway, so there's a cool thing to automatically bring in missing models, and that's to go into the install models. And in this case, we need a depth model. So I search for depth, and we want to control net version 1.1. Um, that's the version, and we want it for, we want our Stable Diffusion uh, 1.5 depth model, because that it has to match the version of our checkpoint. And this is a 1.5 checkpoint. I hit refresh, close this, and now I should go in here and I have my model. So it's automatically downloaded to the right directory, which is super convenient. So we load that and our control net goes into the control net node. Of course, the last thing missing is the image. And we have to, we cannot connect our bitmap image directly to it. We have to tell it to pre-process. Uh, it doesn't have to go through the encoder. You can see that helps. We, we know this because this is blue. And so we connect our image here and we load our image into the image node. We also were used to seeing these as a, a, we can see a preview of these in automatic. So we'll want to generate a preview so I can drag this node out and look and click preview image. And so that way we can make sure that this is working. Um, believe everything is here. You won't really notice that the control net's working if we don't increase the denoise. Though the denoise, remember, at closer to 100% or values, especially above 0.65, will be a more altered image relying on the prompts. And now control enter. Okay, it's generating an image now. I always find that the first time you do these, when you install new nodes, it takes a really long time, even with a small image, to process. Um, and then it should go faster. Okay, so it worked. You can see that without control net, this would have been something completely different. It still maintains a lot of the um, the composition of the uh, of the image. We would can change the denoise. Of course, let's keep if we kept that at 0.7, and we bypass the control net. You'll see that this will be something completely different. And that's why you know, that's how you know it's working. Okay, if we do another one, you'll see it like it's just something completely random. Um, okay, so I think that's it. The one thing that you're probably asking is how do we load more control nets? Then you have to have the um, control net stack, um, and this this is it here. So if you want to do multiples, 
you can skip all of these and you still have to use the preprocessors, but you select from all the ones that you have downloaded, you can select your control nets here and turn them on and off. And here's the value. So it's basically this all stacked together. And then you load your preprocessors in to match each control nets um, uh, model. And then you pump, put this out into a controller. And then you have to take, there's where your prompts come in. And then from there, this thing goes into uh, your positive and negatives. One thing that's important to know is that you can, you can take processed images and load them and then it'll come up with the, the all the nodes. All right, that's it. I think that covered it. I'm gonna do another video on Fucus, which uh, I've been playing around today. Love it, really cool, good alternative to automatic, very fast. All right, I think that covers it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that you found it useful and I covered everything that you need to get started. Uh, you can like and subscribe if you want. I don't care. If you like the way I explain things, you can check out my website. I sell five hours of tutorials on there. Uh, I'm going to be putting it on a more uh, robust online system for teaching you how to incorporate AI into your everyday architecture workflow. So you can check that out in the link below. And thanks for watching. Have a good day.